Marco Parra. Uh, I am from Arizona. I am an actor and a writer, and I've been in Los Angeles for 17 years now. Very cool. So I'm going to ask you the question that I start off all of these conversations with. What do you think people's first impression is of you? Oh, well, personally, I think when people meet me, they think that I'm friendly and uh, approachable. Uh, I hope. But uh, I, I love to meet people. So I, I feel like I always welcoming uh, anyone to come up to me and, and introduce themselves. Sometimes I'll, I'll be in random places and people walk up to me and tell me revealing stories about themselves and I have no clue who they are, which is amazing. Uh, so I, I think I'm maybe appro approachable, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> so in other words, I should mail you some of my business cards so you could give them to them and say, hey, here, if you want to tell your story. Oh, most definitely. I would be great. I'm like the, I, I feel like I always try to be everyone's hype man. So whoever I'm with, and sometimes people don't really like it because they're like, I could speak for myself. But I'm like, oh, I'm with, you know, so-and-so, they're incredible artists, like one of the best directors I've ever worked with, and they're doing this and this and this, and they're like, oh, wow, okay. Like, some people are like, I need to take you around with me and have you introduce me everywhere. And some people are like, well, you know, I, 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 could, I could talk for myself. <laughs> well, I think that your perception about how your first impression is on people is spot on based on some of the comments that have been coming in. People oh, totally, and yes, how we started talking. So. Um, kind of similar to my first interaction with you. Very warm, very inviting, and very, very humble. So, thank you. Cool. Yeah, you're uh, very easy to talk to. Thanks. I try. <laughs> I, I get told um, by my fiancé that I'm nosy, but I'm really genuinely <laughs> curious about people <laughs> and about I'm their the stories. Same, I'm the exact same way. I, my, one of my favorite pastimes is uh, people watching. So... Uh, we know it's been difficult, you know, lately to do that. But one of my favorite things in LA to do is just like, you know, go around and watch how people interact and not necessarily get into their business, but just kind of, you know. Yeah, people think that the coffee shops became home for a reason because we all needed coffee. No, we just can't <laughs> stop watching everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. So you live in Arizona, you're from Arizona. I'm from Arizona. Uh, when when the whole shutdown happened, I came down for my birthday, actually. And that was in March. And then I just ended up staying because everything shut down. And I was just like, well, you know, I might as well just stay with family. So I've been with my family since March now. And have you always been close with your family, like growing up and everything? Uh, very much so. Yeah, my family is like one of the biggest support systems and one of the biggest reasons why I'm even able to be in L.A. And do what I do um, for my par my parents who were very open to allowing me to to helping me I should say go to LA. Uh, my sisters are some of my biggest fans, and uh, I have an aunt out in LA who actually uh, just is always uh, and an uncle who are there always just to help me every step of the way. And I think without that support system, I, I don't I don't think I would be there honestly. Was that a tough? road it was i mean it, it was it's been a tough road it, it but it wasn't from lack of support from my family um where i'm from you know be doing anything in the arts professionally is not really something that's seen as a viable uh, profession or something real um so basically when i was telling people that i was going to go to la to be an actor it was like telling them that i'm flying to the moon tomorrow in a <laughs> in a makeshift uh, spaceship or something uh but my parents always encouraged me that i could do and be whatever i wanted to be i don't know if this was the route they thought that i would choose but <laughs> when i did choose it they were behind me 100 percent. so um you know i i think that without that encouragement I just, did, I wouldn't have had the the confidence, really, I think, to, to just actually go and pursue it. So you say that they empowered you to be anything you wanted to be, which I think is so important for young people to hear, is that they the world is their oyster. They can be what they want to be. And the fact that your family always said that, evidently you didn't read the fine print that said, except an actor. But... <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> 
<laughs> but so explain how you chose that path for yourself and what what and when did you realize that you wanted to be in the industry? You know, it's really strange. I think I, I always knew it, but I never knew, which is kind of, I don't, it doesn't make sense, but it's like my whole childhood was me, you know, basically doing voices and, and characters and joking around with my friends, making them laugh was like, I, it just came naturally to me and things that I always, I, I don't think I would thrive on the attention. I just had fun doing it. I just had fun entertaining. So I, I think that, you know, I was always the class clown. Uh, I was always uh, imitating teachers, making voices. And that eventually got me into trouble, obviously, like it always does. And uh, one of my English teachers, actually, he said, uh, you know, you, you either go to detention or you act in, uh, 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 in one of my school plays because he was the drama teacher. So I was like, well, who wants to do detention? I'm going to do the play. Right. <laughs> and as soon as I, I mean, I had a very small role. It was the importance of being earnest. And uh, I, I was like a butler or something. And uh, as soon as I came on off stage, it, that was it for me. I I mean, I just fell in love. And I, I felt like that's where I was supposed to be. So from that moment on, I, I dabbled in it and I did it. Uh, in high school, I did a lot of sports. So I, I was still fighting it. But my senior year, I quit basketball because we were going to do Guys and Dolls, which I'd watched the movie as Marlon Brando and Frank Sinatra. So I was like, oh, this is awesome, you know, like, uh, and it ended up being Winnie the Pooh. And uh, it was too late for me to go back to basketball. So I was like, well, I'm going to audition. And I ended up being Winnie the Pooh, <laughs> <laughs> which is very odd. But that was my first lead role uh, <laughs> in a high school play. That's an interesting high school play to be doing Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> very, very interesting. Yeah, I, I, it was weird, but it was like, okay, I'm committing to this one million percent, obviously. And uh, yeah, I, I had a bunch of my uh, uh, jock friends come and watch, and you know, they at first they were busting, you know, busting me up for doing it, but then the, you know, they actually had a lot of respect for me, like putting myself out there and doing it, and. You know, I just, I just continued. I, I loved it so much. Would you say that that would be probably one of the hard first steps for people is to put themselves out there and become vulnerable to the criticism? Oh, most definitely. I think that, uh, I think as actors and creatives, we face that every day. Um, we're very emotional and sensitive creatures, uh, you know, and we, we're burying our soul basically. So I think putting ourselves out there is difficult, but I think that the more you do it, the more it becomes like almost a necessity and almost a way of communicating to the world, right? And um, it is difficult at first, but I think it, continue, it continuously gets easy. And, and, and having passion to do it, I think it makes it uh, easier. Do you think that you created any of your characters when you were younger? Um, in any avoidance mechanism or coping mechanism for things? Oh my, totally. Uh, I was actually very overweight my entire childhood up to I was about uh, 25. Uh, I was clinically obese. And uh, one of the ways that I would avoid bullying and avoid, uh, you know, anyone making fun of me, I had to, I had to be quick witted and had to you know, make other people laugh and, and be kind of the life of the party so that it, I could kind of cope with that. Um, so I think it, it definitely was something that helped me out at first. <laughs> well, it made you feel like you fit in in some area, right? And you could have these conversations and then it became comfortable and then people could get to know you. Totally, totally. So, and tell me um, what, grade were you in when you got the uh detention ultimatum <laughs> i like the way you put that detention ultimatum uh i was in eighth grade what would you say maybe to kids that are trying to figure it out how you kind of say that that aha moment the minute you stepped on stage maybe just describe that feeling and and maybe kind of explain that a little bit 
Um, well, I, I, one of the things that really like hits home for me when I look back to that time was uh, my first performance. And one of the teachers came back there and was like, man, look at your parents because they were in the front row. They're like, they were so proud of you. Like, look at their faces. When you came out, they lit up. And that, that to me is just like, I still, I'm getting chills right now just thinking about it. And it was like, I love doing it. I'm getting this like positive feedback. I feel like, you know, I want more of this. You know, this is something that I'm passionate about that I never knew could be something real or tangible. So I would always, you know, uh, encourage anybody, no matter what age you are, but especially children, like find that passion and 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 go for it. Just go, just commit 100% to what you want to do and have that belief that, you know, it, it's it's largely enjoying the journey and, 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 and navigating through that. But if that's already success. You know, the journey is part of the success. So. so tell me about landing in L.A. and the first audition or the first job you landed. Uh, well, it's funny. My first audition in L.A. was to get into the American Academy of Dramatic Arts, which is a school in Hollywood. Uh, and I, I rolled up to the campus like a true Mexican uh, in a van with eight of my family members. <laughs> and uh, they were all waiting outside for me to go in an audition. And uh, I remember just being so incredibly nervous. Uh, and um, that, but it's something that, they, that my family always remembers and we always talk about. And I ended up getting in, which was good, you know, because it would have been, thank you, <laughs> would have been kind of embarrassing if I went with all of them and then they're, they're like, man, you know, you didn't get in. <laughs> but uh, that was my, my first audition in L.A. That was actually my first time in L.A. And uh, so that was interesting. My first job was a track phone commercial. And uh, it was uh, it was a disaster, quite honestly. <laughs> Um, I had to do motions. I had to be lifting weights and doing all these things, moving from one part of the room to the next while delivering these lines. And I just could not get them. I could not get them right. And I remember one of the production uh, guys came up to me and said, there was, a, there was a bike rim on the table with a bunch of spokes. And he said, you see this rim? you see all those spokes and i was like yeah he's like you're one of those spokes he's like all this all these other spokes is the rest of this production right like everyone else working here so he's like we all have to you know work together to get our job done and i was like fair enough <laughs> it was a it was a great lesson for me right off the bat uh about professionalism and about you know just getting the work done and how much of a business it truly is you know it's not always just creativity, fun, arts and crafts, which it, it, it is also a part of that, but it's as much of a business as it is that. So it was, I'm actually really grateful for that. Well, and it's a career. I mean, it is a true, right. it is an industry, it is a career, and right. it is a job at the end of the day. It isn't all glamour and glitz, right? There's a behind the scenes for a reason. <laughs> Very much so. <laughs> so, what is something that would surprise people to know about you? Wow, something that would surprise people about me is that I'm really a closet, uh, I don't want to say nerd because that's probably derogatory, but like I, I have such a thirst for learning, just like weird, odd, scientific, uh, perfect example my one of my dreams uh was actually to become an astronaut before uh, being an actor so like i i just have this fascination with the moon and outer space and stars uh, i think i don't think too many people know that about me so you've done obviously stage and you've obviously done screen am i allowed yeah. to ask which you like better yeah <laughs> i think uh you know that's such an interesting i and i know where you're coming from with that um for me personally i love the intimacy 
and the reality of film. And I think film is what I first fell in love with. Um, so I would have to say film. But I mean, being on stage and, you know, once like uh, Pacino had said, you know, once the train leaves the station, there's no turning back. So there's no cut, there's no, <laughs> let's do that again, or fix it in post. Like everyone loves to say, it's, it's just like, you're in it and you're going. So you got to figure it out. And I think that there's a certain rush to that. It's almost like auditioning, you know, when you're auditioning, it's, it has a lot of the same uh, concepts. So I would say film, but I like them both. Do you <laughs> still get nervous and at auditions? Do you still get butterflies? Oh my God, yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, yes, 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 yeah. Well, I mean, one of the reasons why I continue to act is because of that feeling, you know, I, I learned to see them not as nerves, but as excitement uh, and, and that rush that you get, you know, some people have to jump off a plane, at, you know, however many thousand feet to get that same rush that, you know, a lot of us get walking into a room to audition for a one line role, you know, so um, I love it. I've learned to, you know, I feel like you do have to learn how to manage it and how to work with it and have it help you in the room. Um, but yeah, definitely, I, I always, I mean, I got nervous uh, coming on here with you, so. Really? Yeah, yeah. I don't think I'm that scary. <laughs> no, I no, guess no, it depends like on what's just happening. Like in a great way, just like excitement i should say you know it is just excitement and you always just want to come off you know it's, you know I'll, I'll admit i feel the same before them too i get nervous <laughs> i'm like i do this but at the same token i don't know what you're gonna say and i like i mentioned to you when we were preparing i like everything to be organic so i don't have a list of questions these are just real conversations with real people and they're so fun <laughs> uh, yeah no i mean it is fun and you're you're so easy to talk to, like I said. So it's like, I think that lends to your style. You know what I mean? Sometimes people have to have certain questions and have it like that, but it's so free flowing. And I think that maybe I, I wouldn't think of some of the things that I was saying, you know, or come up with certain things if I if it wasn't so, you know, free flowing. What you were saying about the auditions and the butterflies and working within in that experience, it kind of was making me think about how that can apply to other jobs and careers. And I think that when you're going in to an audition, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but when you're going into an audition, you're showing off your skill and your knowledge about your career and your craft and what you've learned in your space, right? Most Same as if yes. someone is going into a meeting and has to present that's what they're presenting and it's almost like their audition and and presentation of their learnings and role definitely i, I think that a lot of times us uh, we as actors need to think about it at, more as a business type meet because you know if you're going into a certain company to talk to them about a job or an opportunity you do research on that job you know who runs the company, you know certain stats about those companies. And, uh, you know, sometimes as actors, we just look at the script and say, well, I'm gonna go in and do this, when really you should know uh, what shows has this casting director cast before? You know, what's the tone of these shows? Is this show on TV already? Like, what wh what is it like, right? So you wanna, you wanna do your homework, you wanna do your research, just as you would any other job. So yeah, I think that's 100% correct. Right, so it goes back to that um, wheel with all the spokes, <laughs> right? Totally. And how you fit into the whole program, not just that moment. And I think that people sometimes are so hypervigilant about focusing on their task at hand that they lose sight of the puzzle that they're a piece of. Definitely. So uh, I think I that's, gonna put it I think that's that. really important. What would be in your top three projects that you would want if you could tell the people watching, you should check these three things out? Uh, projects like shows that are on now? That you've worked on. Oh, that I've worked on? Mm -hmm. um, 
That's why I said I don't want to make anyone feel bad if you didn't pick them as your favorite. So we're going to uh, go with yeah, three. Right. Uh, so yeah. yeah, so what would... Well, there's actually a couple of projects that I worked on that are about to come out uh, that have been incredible. One, which we shot during quarantine that Michael is actually a part of. Uh, and it was all shot virtually. And it's a sci-fi horror comedy uh, called The Central Authority. Okay. And, um, it was done by uh, Armin Nasseri and Kristen West who put it all together during this time and created something very interesting, almost like a 1984 uh, uh, George Orwell type of uh, uh, situation that's going on. So that I'm very excited about. Uh, it felt amazing to do, you know, to actually shoot a film while we were all in quarantine. So that was great. Um, and the other project that I, that I did that I actually shot in uh, Mexicali, it's called Safe House. And it's about a, a young female uh, um, medical student who actually gets caught up in a human trafficking situation because of her brother. Oh, wow. And uh, she, is she is being held by the CIA. And um, I, I think it, that was interesting because the character uh, breaks a lot of the mold in, 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 uh, in terms of Hollywood movies. She's, she's a woman, she's a medical student, she has nothing to do with, with any criminal enterprise, yet she still gets caught up in this in, <laughs> entanglement, which is a, a word that everyone's loving right now. But uh, uh, she gets caught in this situation that had, you know, had nothing to do with her. So. I would say that's the second one. Um, and I did a show called Snowfall, which uh, is on FX. And um, it speaks to the crack e epidemic that happened in South Central Los Angeles during the 80s. And uh, what a lot of people don't know is that um, the government actually had a hand in uh, flooding the streets with the actual uh, narcotics here in the United States, which is insane. It's insane to even think about. But um, I think doing projects like that, which for me is very important because, you know, I, I feel like uh, I'm not a politician, but I do have a lot of uh, uh, ideas and, and, and things that I, I love to say and comment on society. And I think this is, a, this is the best way to do it through entertainment. So, uh. that's awesome. <laughs> well, you'll have to do me a favor, and in the comments, you'll have to post the names of the things that are already out that people can watch. Oh, and definitely. then when the stuff comes out that you were speaking about, definitely post the links to that because I don't, okay. for one, want to miss any of it. And um, <laughs> I'm very interested in the things that you had talked about. So, thank you. Well, I probably should ask you our closing question, but is there anything else that you would want to share before I do so? Um, I would just, uh, honestly, and not, and not, uh, we talked a little about politics, but uh, and not to put on any one side or the other, but I would just love to tell everyone, you know, to make their voice heard. Either way, whatever way you, you lean or whatever you, you go towards, like just, make your voice heard. I think it's very important, uh, especially right now. And um, and thank you for giving me this platform to even, you know, I, sometimes it's difficult to talk about yourself, but, uh, you know, just to, to put it out into the world and have a great conversation with someone like you that's, you know, uh, opening this platform for people. I, I'm very appreciative. Well, for thank, that. thank you. you. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I hope that others feel that way in terms of the platform and the interviews. I feel that there are so many of us, right? And being human isn't one size fits all. And I think that what you were saying about just be heard in the manner that you want to be heard. It doesn't matter which side you're on, which side of the fence. We all have something to learn from each other every day. Most definitely. So, so last but not least, what if you were walking down the street and you had only one opportunity to hold up a sign or tell the people that were passing you by something about yourself? What would you want them to know about Marco? I would want people to know that 
I do a lot of what I do to try to inspire others to follow their dream, no matter what it is, and to be themselves, to be who they are and to do what they love. And I just, I, I try to inspire people to be what they want to be always, just like my parents did for me. So I think it would be follow your dream. I like love me. it. <laughs> no, I love it. It's so great. And I think you're such a good representation of that and such a positive, positive person. And I'm really grateful that you were given the opportunities and the support from your family. And thank you for the opportunity to let me sit down with you today. No, thank you. I had an amazing time. Me too. Enjoy.